Well, let's try another one. Let's try another one. Let's let's get a better. I know. I feel like he should have conceded. If I milled his fungal plots. <laughs> I mean, his win condition was in the graveyard. How you know? Why wouldn't he just give up there? I feel like that would, I feel like that's a bit of a dick move to not give up there. Concede there, please. Be a good person. Yeah, let's open some good stuff. Let's open up, you know, if we, I mean, if we open a Black Blade again, let's just, open, let's just see some legendaries in the pack. How about that? Right? Like, this time, let's just see the actual legendaries. It's insane we only got one. Let's open... What's the most, like, fun draft rare to open? Is it Helm of the Host? Is it always just Helm of the Host? I'm prioritizing blue and probably green, because I really think those are the best. Well, not the best, but those are the most fun colors. The blue-green ramp deck is so fun. Uh, oh, brother. We got an Eviscerate here, pack one. That means we got to pick it. Right? Like, Eviscerate overgrow. Even though I really like being in that being in that style of deck. Terrible rare. I mean, just the worst. Literally one of the worst rares in the set. That's a burn. That's a massive burn. I don't really want to be in black again. Just because I'm tired of playing it. But, like, you gotta take it. I know! It's such a, like... We could pretend it wasn't here and take Grow from the Ashes, or Skittering Surveyor for that matter. I still have not drafted Blue Red Wizards. It's probably because I don't... I don't value the... Um, I don't value the red cards very highly. I don't... <laughs> if I take a Viscerate, at least... I mean, I better be playing it. All right, well, check this out. Sports Crown Thalid, quite good. Raf Capuchin, quite good. Uh, I actually think Raf Capuchin is worth playing here. Rather, picking here, rather. There's actually not even anything else that good here. Weight is fine. Ventress Impulse is fine. Skin Witch is fine. But take the power level of Raf Capuchin. Okay. Deep Freeze, Drake, Foul Duck. I don't really like Foul Duck. The Duck. I think this is a Drake here. Druid's good green card to possibly wield. Deep Freeze could possibly wield. I doubt it. But more likely we're going to see something like Dub or maybe Sergeant at Arms out of this pack, which is actually kind of okay. Thalid card is definitely worth considering, no question. It's good, real good. I just like Raf the most, and I, yeah, yeah, exactly. The, oh, I mean, there's a there's a Raf card for you, but this is a this is a good green pack. I mean, Land of War and plots, Snapper. I mean, I am not against taking Land of War Elves here. Uh, although I guess Corsair is probably better. Corsair, wheel the Snapper, or wheel the even the well, no, the Servant's not that good. The Relic Runner is fine. Yeah, I like green a bunch, but see the thing is, like, I could be green blue and splash white easily, or green white and splash blue easily for for Raph. Like, I kind of want to take Elves, but I I think Corsair is the correct pick here. Well, I know it is. <laughs> Elves is not the pick. <laughs> yeah, we could... I mean, it's if we see a Skittering Surveyor, we could easily splash this. Splash this black, or we could be... Uh, yeah. Yeah, we could do that. It's probably just worth it anyways, right? Run a couple swamps. <laughs> Ooh. 
two at a giant. I mean, that card's pretty good. It's not amazing. Befuddle, Dark Bargain, Healing Grace, Primordial Worm, Radiating Lightning, Run Amok, Impulse. Like, the best card in the pack is probably the two-headed giant, but, oh, man, I'm a double red, like... But nothing here, like, really adds to my my deck. Like, Befuddle is playable, sort of. Dark Bargain is probably the best, like, thing that would be in, you know, related to any of the colors I have. But, like, I don't know. I, I guess I take the Giant, and, like, that way maybe red comes my way. I could be blue, r blue red, and splash Raph. Whew, that sucks. Halar, Arcane Flight, Dub, Envoy. Ooh, wow, we're getting some mixed signals. I th like, is it Flight here? You can get Dark Bargain so easily, though. I'd, like, I'd rather take this and, like, if, if we start getting past really good red cards, like, I at least have that. I think, um... I like Halar, but that's two colors we're not really wanting to be into. I think it's just the flight here. I'm thinking of Llanowar Envoy, but probably not. Llanowar Envoy is not that good, but like it's if you're in a green deck, it. I think it's like fine to help you get that third color. Syncopate. I don't. I don't really like Syncopate, and like a lot of people are really. Really hot, much higher on syncopate than me. P people who are better than me at draft for sure. So I like, I guess I trust them. <laughs> I love Arcane Flight so much because of the art. Like I want a play mat of this. I want a poster of this. I want the art of this. <laughs> Hopefully in. Uh, Hopefully Steve Prescott is at GP Vegas this year, and I get to uh, I get to get a print of this. Would love to see a big a big arcane flight behind there. Yeah, these packs have been quite middling. I mean, Eviscerate, Raph are solid, and then like Corsair and Drake are all right. Excavator, Arcane Flight, I think. I don't think you want really more than one arcane flight. And I don't think Excavator is real, so. Abomination or Paladin? I don't like either of them at all, really. But I think I'll take that guy. And hope not to play it. Nah, no real strong It's tough to get those strong signals when the packs are pretty, like, low... Uh, power level, right? So, like, does an explorer better than a crows and druid? Because, like, we don't have to be white. Like, we could be green. Like, I think it's be I think it's actually better than the explorer. So, like, I actually going to hedge bets there and take the green card. So we could easily be like, if we open a grow from the ashes, we could be green and then splash the white. Even splash the courser if we get enough fixing, which we probably won't, to be perfectly honest. But I'll take the impulse here as well then. Yeah, all right, another druid. This is probably a relic runner, which is like not great, but playable. Very much hope I don't have to play a navigator's compass. I probably won't. I don't think like navigator's compass is um, should be a consideration like outside of something like sealed. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking for this pack, you guys. Oh wait, isn't history banalia worth a whole bunch of money? And really good. <laughs> I was going to say I wanted to take Tati over here and really get into green blue. But I, I think. It's like 12 tickets. I got to take it. And it's a good card. I mean, <laughs> don't get me wrong. It's great. Yeah, we got to take the history here. That's a shame because I like uh, blue green the most. And uh, oh well. Yeah. 
I guess we're in white. Which is fine. That's cool. Whoa, another Tatiova! I, I think, though, with that history, we're really looking to be in white now. Bodyguard's fine. <clears throat> so we're blue, we're blue, white. No, I think it's probably, what, like, blink of an eye here? Bodyguard? What's better? I think blink is better. I don't really like the bodyguard that much. Well, I guess it's a knight, which kind of matters for this. I mean, we can we can we can also bounce our own history. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, I think it's blank here, and I don't know. Hopefully, get a snapper out of this pack. Short sword's not the end of the world, but. Also not great. Yeah, I gotta take the blink. Blink's very good. Um, man, not a lot of good stuff. This is a bad pack for us. Very bad. Like, vicious offering is great. Knight of Mouse, very good. Whoa, what's going on back there? Fungal infections, good. Tallow candles, fine. I mean, vicious offering. Are we splashing black? Are we not? Two pretty strong black cards. Very strong black cards. And like, what, I, I'm going to take a blood tallow candle over this? I know, right? Offering, I guess? Sure. Triumph of Gerard. Not great. Talarian Scholar. I don't know. I don't know about this Triumph of Gerard. I'm going to take it. I don't think it's that good, though. But it's fine, for sure. Sapling Migration, Thalid Omnivore. Maybe we're not white. Like, is this just a trick now? Like, are we black because of the two removal spells in the Thalid Omnivore? Or do I take Trapper, which is not as good? Like, do we put these away? Ooh. I hate it when drafts turn like this. This keeps us historic. So I'm gonna actually I think I'm gonna take this, even though it may be wrong. But let's like let's carve it out, right? Like let's let's have a plan and let's go for it. So, like, I'll take this Relic Runner, too, I suppose. So the plan is to be, like, historic. So let's just put those aside for a second. So this is one thing I'm always guilty of, is not drafting with a real plan in mind. I just kept keep taking the, the best cards. I think here we're going to get paid off if we get into this deck, so... Call is fine here. Soothsayer, no. Rona... Rona is Rona has upside here because of our two things plus Raph plus if we're splashing we can get and we can use these things. I actually think Rona is pretty sweet here. Yeah, green green looks a little open coming our way too, which is a bummer because we could have had two Tatiovas and but you, you can't pass this card. It's worth twelve tickets. Like this pays for your draft. Is it call or is it Rona? Let's do call. Because we might might be able to get a pretty late Rona. I've seen them go pretty late before. An Adam at Will here, probably. Or it's Tallow Candle. Mm. I think the candle, just because of the historic synergies, actually. Well, the Teferi uh, probably wouldn't make our deck, but it's actually not the worst. Um... Considering it can like blink the sagas, right? Is it the arcanist or is it a unicorn here? I don't have very many. I mean, I guess it gets us a call the cavalry. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna take it. All right, a disciple. <laughs> oh man. Target permanent to its owner's hand. I mean, I'm never gonna play this. Oh, actually, no. Tragic poet's better. 
Tragic Poet can actually get us something. Rob Bob, how's it going, man? So we're looking to be blue-white historic. I think that's fine. And, like, there's a possibility of us splashing uh, these two very good removal spells. So, you know, things aren't... Things aren't in the tubes or anything. We're looking fine. Torgar. Man, we're getting like all the, getting all these like black cards. Like it just wants us to play black so much. Torgar, eviscerate. Oh, and taunting us with green from Land War Elves as well. We got a courser. Call the cavalry. Yeah, this is fine. Invoke the divine is actually sweet. Like what am I first picking? Like what am I first picking here? The courser. Woof. Call the cavalry. Woof. I know, right? Passing eviscerate, like. Uh, I think it's coarser. All right. Oh wow. Okay. Oh great. This is why the packs suck because they're everything we want is in the one back. Well, I mean, this is pretty easy, Danatha. But I do want Sanctum Spirit. I do want Time of Ice. I do want Academy Drake. I do want Divination. Like, <laughs> what do you guys think here? I think it's Danatha. I think it's between Time of Ice and Danatha, and I think it's probably Danatha. We got a piece of equipment. Danatha even looks even better. Yeah. I think so too. And hopefully, I mean, maybe we will a divination out of this, or maybe even a Drake. I've seen these Sanctum Spirits go pretty late too. Wouldn't be against that. Sphinx here, I think, is a good pick. Uh, over the divination. The Arcanist. I like this. We just need a nice, another, like, big flyer is great. Although now I'm, like, really looking to get a. Oh, Quende. Okay. <sighs> Oh, I hate I hate it when Quende and Jessing Lance are in the same pack, and I want them, because Quende just makes Jessing Lance so good. But I think it's like you just gotta go Quende here. Well, the decks kind of come together here a little bit, so that's nice. Like I could use a I could really use a divination. I could really use a what's it called? Banishing Light. Love a Banishing Light. Spirit might wheel. Yeah, it definitely might wheel. Yeah. I know. I did want legendaries. Another blink. Well, there's another sanctum spirit. I think we're taking the second blink and then probably not running the vicious offering. And probably not. I mean, probably not the eviscerate also. So if we can get this and then wheel kind of, kind of any of these cards. We're going to wheel three cards out of this pack. Yeah, no, it's going to be like Rat Colony and Fire Elemental or something in a swamp. So we're not getting anything good. So let's take the Blink. The Blink's obviously very good, so it's good. Banishing Light would be sick. Wow. Oh, man, but we also really want a Jousting Lance now, obviously. Raph Capuchin doubling up on Raph. I'll take it. All day long, we'll take another Raph. What a great pick. Sentinel is actually, I mean, it's the same thing. Like, it's all getting packed into one pack for us. Look at this. Snapper would be great. Adamant Will would be fine. Sentinel would be fine. Like, I'd, I'd put any of these cards in the last pack. Oh, actually, I guess we got Blink out of that pack. But you know what I mean? Double Raph is real nice. We'll... We'll definitely be happy about that. Whoa, Tetsuko. Oh, man, okay. Tetsuko is actually quite good here. We got two Relic Runners. And the Pegasus Coursers are even... I think it's Tetsuko. 
kind of want a Snapper or an Arcanist too, but I actually think it's Tetsuko here. I mean, Tetsuko's good, right? Like, I haven't actually played with it that much. That's why I'm kind of like, hmm. Yeah, we'll flash in a Wrath with a Wrath. We got there with the Snapper. We always knew, always knew we would. Oh, man, nice late Scholar too. Take it. This is like a three-mana play, probably, or like a two-mana play. Turtle power, big time. Not punished at all. And the Divination. We got there. All right, this deck is looking way better than the last one. <laughs> like... Yeah, man, we got the legendary creatures. We don't have a lot of historic synergy otherwise. We actually would have loved to see... I would have loved to see a... We got two divinations. Probably not going to play both of them. Uh, would have loved to see, like, one of those Jousting Lances in a pack that didn't have something super powerful in it. I would have loved a Jousting Lance in this, in this uh, deck. Oh, well. Another Relic Runner. I think I'll take it, actually. Over the Excavation Elephant, yeah. Nice. And Adamant Will. Yeah, man, that's a playable card. We'll take it. I think the card quality is high enough that we don't need to splash the black for a removal. I think we'll be fine without it. Group Reader separately. Put this down, like, here. Although it's kind of tough when Syncopate wants to be on three and you've got a lot of threes. I don't think we're running Sarah Disciple. I'd actually much rather run the Relic Runner over that. That is a late Adamant Will. Yeah, absolutely. So I think I'm going to keep the candle. I think I'm going to actually cut this Arcane Flight. Because, like, we've got a lot of stuff... <sighs> Actually, you know, the Arcane Flight on a Quende or on a Danith is pretty sweet. And obviously, I'm the, you know what? No, I'm not cutting it. I got a Snapper. Not a chance am I cutting that. Adamant will sink. Like, is Syncopate go? Like, I'm not a big fan of Syncopate. Uh, two more cuts. Probably a Divination. Like, do I cut a Courser? Do I cut a Relic Runner? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got eight ways to trigger historic. Two two relic runners. Like if my plan isn't really to relic runner them, right? Like But I like the Tetsuko interaction there. Okay, yeah, so you guys are into that. You cut the Arcanist. I like that I like that Arcanist gets us call and divinations a bit early and helps us with blink of an eye. You know what I mean? It helps us uh, kick the blink of an eye. I think Triumph of Gerard will actually end up being decent here. Uh, putting counters probably on like our uh, Wrath or Sphinx or something like that, right? Does Talarian Scholar do anything? It's a two, it's a three minute two three that's been pretty solid, pretty shown to be pretty solid in the format. But can we afford to cut it? We probably can. The one three coursers are going to get through with Tetsuko as well. Yeah, okay. Maybe the Scholar goes. And then we need one more cut. You'd run Syncopate over the Scholar. I, I'm i not wild about Syncopate, man. I don't know. I like I might side in Syncopate if there's something I can't deal with or something. And then, like... You could cut the Arcanist, eh? Man, I like the Arcanist. I almost want to cut the Triumph of Gerard, but I guess we don't want to lose the Historic Synergy. Blinks, Divinate... Like... I almost want to cut a divination over this thing. But then I guess this goes down. You'd run the third relic runner. Yeah, with the Tetsukos, actually. that 
Gonna have a real aggressive start here. But now what do we cut? Uh, like... A divination? The candle? Ah, uh, the candle's a good trigger for those relic runners. I don't know, man. Maybe two relic runners is fine. Yeah, really, eh? Dump the candle. It's our only bit of hard removal. Like... And it's one of our historic synergies. So, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven now. Not as reliable. I, like, <laughs> I need removal if they're dead, yeah. All right, well, let's try this, I guess. I don't know if that's correct. Like maybe an actually adamant will is better to take out than like an arcanist. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Flying cat, yes. Flying cat boosts one, plus one plus one. I just love the flying cat with the with the snapper. Or like it's a, it's a, obviously quite good on these two as, as well. So. I mean, in a pinch, it can go on a knight or something. 3-3 three, three Vigilant Flyers, not bad. Yeah, I guess we are kind of aggressive, aren't we? Yep. All right, fine. Let's run it and let's see. 9-8. Yep. Sounds good. All right. So, looking to side in Candle if we get some things we can't handle. And probably Syncopate as well. And, uh, ooh, this is actually, this is a pretty questionable hand here. But we got our color, so I think it's a keep. Well, it's certainly not an aggressive hand here. Oh, I take it back. himself a tapper there which is fine so I guess we just play this and get in even though we're taking five from this Flooding a little bit here, too, right? Like, that's not great. Taking six, wow. Okay, I think at this point we just have to sit. Because he just taps the other one otherwise. And this way we can add him at will and block. I don't like, I don't love Relic Runner as a main plan of the deck, to be honest. And uh, that's what I was feeling when I was thinking about cutting one of the three of them. Like, I don't think they're that good. So. 
So we'll go like this. And go like... No, wait. Go like that, and go like this. Make sure I got my auto yields off. Could he have? He could have the fight card. I'm not an aggro player. I'm not. Well, like, two mana, two ones. Like, yeah, it's a cool ability and everything. But, like, it just, re it just relies on something else. Like, themselves, they're not... To me, the, by themselves, they're not, like, that good. You know what I mean? Whereas, like, it's, it's different if it was, like, some really good aggressive card. And I was, like, all wanting to... Like, they, they could get in no problem. But they get... A lot of times, these things just get blocked by sapperlings. So, flying first strike, lifelink. Sweet. Get in. And the Sphinx looks at our draw bottom. Look at this, man. Bottom, bottom. Hey, what's going on? Sap my grace. Here's a hot take. I don't think Marwin's any good. <laughs> oh, history. That's fun. Create a white white. Okay. A white white. Create a white white. Create a two two white. Uh, this means we put our cane flight on the runner and attack with both of them. <laughs> we can put it on the Sphinx like we did last time. Yeah, I ran Marwin in a deck where I had, what did I have? I think I had like two, it was a blue-green deck. I, I had two... I had land war. Either I either had two land war elves or an elfheim druid and the land war elves, both all of which are elves. And I um. And I had like land war scout or something like so. I had like four or five other elves, and I still, I and I was like once in a while I'd get a counter on it and everything, but like most of the time it was just a real useless piece of garbage. Yeah, that's the game. All right. Sweet. Sweet, 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 sweet. So this guy wants to go wide with sappies. Uh, which means what? Runner. So unblockable. Like, honestly, I think runner gets way worse in this. Like, that runner was kind of dead, even with all that stuff on it, if it wasn't for arcane flight. <sighs> Not, I don't love it. I don't love it. Uh, I almost want to go like... I just want to like cut them and put in like... Arcanist. Scholar. Syncopate, even. Candle. But, you know what? We did aggro them out there. That's, that's what happened. I, do you think it's cut, worth cutting one? For something like a uh, a better blocker? Like an Arcanist or something? Yeah, syncopating his kick spells. <laughs> I am. I'm very much the defensive. You know, I, I listened to an episode of. Uh, I was listening to an episode of uh, Brothers War. No, Commander Cookout. No, it was Brothers War. It was Brothers War, and they were talking about. Um, all right, they were talking about getting out of their like defensive shell. It was during it was a Alesha deck that they were talking about. <clears throat> well, what do you guys think of this? I think this is good if we hit a land. This can be really good. Don't have a play. We have we don't we don't really have a play though. Yeah. 
Yeah? All right. That's what I was thinking, too. I was thinking keep. <coughs> um, okay. All right. So hopefully, hopefully we get that land. <coughs> there was building an Alesha deck, and they're talking about getting out of your uh, defensive shell. Because, obviously, with Alesha, you want to be attacking and bring your stuff back. But it's a fun way. They're talking about how, like, it's a really fun way for people who like to do that, who like to, like, play combo -y style decks um, and are usually like sit back and be pretty defensive about it to actually get into a, a, an attacking position while still still getting that same kind of gameplay and I was like that's a really good point and like I do find myself doing that a lot I find myself really getting into uh, oh wait do I play the Courser first or Danatha. I think you play Danatha first. Um, yeah. Anyways, um, so I've 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 been trying to think of that in in terms of commander in draft. I never really considered it, but it's pr you guys are right. Like it's true. I definitely am not a aggro drafter. Sean is much more the aggro drafter. He definitely like red is my least favorite color in Magic, and. Uh, Pretty sure it's Sean's favorite. So if we swing, he can block with all four of these things and I still die. So I think we just chill. Red is second best to blue. I mean, that's definitely, I think that's like definitely true <laughs> in in magic in general but I am a I'm definitely a uh, that trapper is bad news uh, just can't block if we make this a three Three first strike. We don't have to make it a three three first strike. We can, yeah. Instead of the course, I'm gonna play this on Danatha. Now, if I attack, they still kill me. But then this also, I mean, it's gonna tap this thing probably. So, oh, color color preference. You're saying for you. Red is second best to blue. Wow, we're really hurting for mana here, dudes. I think I just... Do I start to just get in here? Yeah, she has vigilance. So we're going to do this. Yeah, I'm just going to start attacking here. Ooh, Shauna. Don't really have an answer to Shauna. I'm guessing he has another historic spell, too, because he's going to tap down Danatha. Why else wouldn't you just tap down Danatha? Oh, to get in, to get this guy in, I see. Oh, a little bird. Leia, that was a bird on the windowsill. You missed it. Ugh, guys, come on. <laughs> a 10-10, ten, ten, yeah? Sure. It does feel like a bit of a burn when your Triumph of Gerard makes doesn't really give Danatha anything besides flying. <laughs> That's kind of a burn. Yeah, Shauna, very, very good here. 
And a definite burn on us that we haven't drawn a single blue mana. Uh, although any mana gets us Quende, which makes uh, makes her pretty scary, I think. Puts them at two turns. They can't block with that thing. This thing's going to get kicked. Like, I actually... Okay, depending on what is, what is the attack with here. If he, just, if he just attacks with Shauna, I think we just take it. Do we? We can gain eight life, which means he's only hitting for five. If we get a land and I'm going to live on the wild side here and just let it in. Hopefully draw land. Oh, we did. Oh, it's Quende. Is now is Quende the move here? Yeah, I think it is. We gain a bunch of life that way. Flying, double strike, lifelink, vigilance. We'll take it. So now the two coursers are also de uh, dead. Disciples, a blocker. He's still dead to... I think even if this is fine, right? Like... What do we take here? One, two, so that's six, so eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Oh, he's got exact seas otherwise. Um, I mean, uh, I guess he could have like one of the pump spells or something. Okay, well, we'll go to blocks here. I almost like don't want to block with any either of these two and just block uh, Shauna with Quen Quende. But I think it's probably better to block. Danth on the unicorn so he doesn't gain life. Or Quende on the unicorn. Just in case of the pump to kill. Adam at will kills her. And then this. Thing is, is it doesn't really matter if he gains life. Because I hit him for eight this way. Like... Oh, I guess he just blocks there. Yeah, you're right. Okay, actually, we have to do that. And I guess gaining a little bit of life myself is probably fine. Yeah, exactly, as a blocker. I, I, I did not see that. I did forget about that for a second. So I think we're good here. I think this is the move. It's funny because if he didn't attack with everyone, I actually would lose there. Or well, not lose, but I'd be in rough shape. I actually probably shouldn't have blocked. I should have just put Danatha. I shouldn't have blocked with Danatha, actually. Quende on the Unicorn and then the Courser on the Big Dude. Oh, yeah, no, I guess I had to do that, didn't I? Yeah, all right. The deck looks the deck looks sweet, eh? This is pretty good. We're doing okay here. That first round was decent.
All right, all right, all right. Hey, here's a question. Uh, you guys are all cool. Oh, my God. This is a definite mull. Um, the best part of podcast editing is getting rid of intrusive ums. The second best part, eliminating fan noise. Oh, you are you editing a podcast right now? Um, what was I about to say? Oh, I know. Okay, check this out. You guys are all computers probably, right? Have you done this? Have you? Oh, this is basically just as bad, but I, this is a keep at least. Man, Adam at will? Come on, guys. I need a creature here. I'm putting down on the bottom. Um, ah, the EDH rec cast. Right. Oh, I think you told me you were editing that, right? Yeah, you did. A bad dog. Um, if you guys haven't gone to iTunes and given us a review on the podcast, I know probably a bunch of you have, actually. But if you haven't done that yet... Might I gently suggest that you uh, that you go take a look? Um, because it's uh, very, very helpful. And I'll just post the link right here. There it is. So what? A, that's a bit of a laugh. You don't use iTunes? I mean, if you have an iTunes account and you don't even really use it, because like, some people just have them anyways, I mean, that's fine too. Get in there. You don't even have to say anything specific. You can still comment and uh, like review. And it's actually super, super helpful to everyone who, uh, who, who podcasts. It's actually like a really, it's something we never, I, yeah, I know I barely ever do it except for like podcasts that I really, really like. So this is just a sweet start for this guy. Look at this. It's hard. It's gonna be hard to be aggro against Steel Leaf. Gaining a bit of life might be good. These blanks aren't <laughs> aren't the worst. So I think what we do here is we go. Arcane Flight, Triumph of Gerard, take six. And like. And then blink them a few times and draw some cards and hopefully try and uh, try and make it so that um, we actually out tempo them. Wait, flying can't be blocked. I did it. It must have just got the can't be blocked because I cast the triumph there. I really can't do it. You really can't. No, you. You need. You do need to have an account, certainly. Like so, if you don't have an account, then you really can't do it. But if you, you know, lots of people have iTunes accounts from early days. You know, maybe they don't have a, maybe they don't have an Apple device right now. But maybe, at some point. Oh, you can't do it from that website. Oh, yeah, that website is it's a bit weird. Usually it what it does it, usually it um redirects people to uh to their own iTunes. Yeah, you need yeah, it looks like you need to do it in iTunes, so don't worry about it. Oh, I hope he doesn't have that fight card. Ooh, that would be so bad. Oof. Thank you. I'm really living in fear of that fight card right now. 
Because if we try and blink his steel leaf, he can just do that in response. That will make me quite sad. So, because if I try and kick it, especially. I think he would have used it there if he had it. No, he wouldn't have, because we were a 4-3. Like, we still would have killed this thing. He's not going to use that fight card. He might in response to me blinking his steel leaf, though. And that would be a pretty good move. Do you think he would have used it? I don't think he... I don't know. Because it kills his steel leaf. Like, he's winning the race right now. I mean, I guess he sees that he won't because of the triumph, but... Considering I'm kind of all in on this thing, yeah, maybe you would have. Is there even a reason to use it right now? Go to nine, he goes to... I think I just wait. Ah, never mind. No, I'm not going to wait. We get punished here if he has it. I think we can race this too, but I feel like he's actually going to drop something pretty... I think he's going to drop something here. Otherwise, he would have attacked with the elves. Like, I'm feeling something... I'm feeling like a big kicked thing here. Which, then, we're not exactly winning that race. And then next turn, I want to maybe play the Sphinx. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Guitar Spider drawing the card is quite good. So he's kicking. Ooh, if it's a, yeah, see if it's a crow's injury, that's real bad. That's real bad tempo for us. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I mean we're gonna gain some life here, which is sweet, obviously. You know, we're back up to 21 here at 2 or 19 or whatever. So, like, that's pretty good. Yeah, we still hit him back hard, and we have a blocker for, like, the druid and stuff. So, that's good, at least. The next turn, we if we draw a land, we hold we play Relic, Relic Runner and hold up the blink. And if I mean we do the same thing, we just don't get to hold up the kicker. Yeah, <laughs> watch out for that O2. Yeah. I mean, what's he waiting for now? What are the odds you think the Dawnbringer has Lyra Dawnbringer uh, uh, in, his, in his deck? So if this is a... Okay, this is Raph. So we're pretty stoked about Raph. Do I leave Raph? Draw the planes, play Relic Runner, hold up Blink. When he plays his Steel Leaf, Blink that. Next turn, f Flash and Wrath make Relic Runner un unblockable. Competitor Commander, what's up? I think I like that play. Am I, th am I overthinking that? We want to flash in Raph to get the full value, but it's probably not. I'm going to put on top, and then I'm going to put on top. Yeah. All right. I think that's a good. I think that's. I think that's a play. I think that's what we want to be. There comes the steel leaf.
school call. Okay. And I, uh, yeah, we're just getting in here. So he's going to swing for like five. Well, he's not going to get in with that. So two, four, six. And we're hitting him in the air for eight. So that's a pretty sweet deal, Jamil. Yeah, we have lethal next turn as well, so. And then we got Raph. Oh, save the blink for a flyer, yeah. I mean, unfor I mean, fortunately, yeah. Yeah, that's probably great. Yeah, there it is. We still have Raph to flash in, which is pretty sweet, so. You're right, though. That that's the move. That was the move, anyways. Actually, so he blocks this three, four, five. I gotta make sure my auto yields are off because now I flash in Raf, and our boy can't be blocked. Not aggro. Yeah. Well, the plan was to do that, so that's what I just had in my head. I didn't even consider that we had lethal already, you know? Well, he just... I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, why is he blocking that? That's weird. Oh, no, this thing can't be blocked. Right. Okay, sweet. Forgot that this was still a relic runner. <laughs> So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. He's got twelve on the board right now. If he can like bounce my or kill my raf, no, he doesn't have it. Okay. <laughs> it was possible to lose that, right? Like if he, what could he have done? If he like animus thing fights the raf with the steel leaf and then has the the green pump spell could win that game i mean that's that's a pretty good uh line but pretty good draw for him rather um do i bring in syncopate here i really don't have many ways to handle that that arcanist or uh, pff, arcanist the uh steel leaf champion is the candle the move here candle might be good Minus five, minus five. Green deck. Syncopate might be good. He doesn't have it. <laughs> so so here's the thing. I actually kind of like the candle because it gets the Relic Runners going. Plus it can be used to kill that thing. Syncopate on the draw is sweet as well. Maybe that's worth like losing... Still haven't seen Tetsuko, which would be so good. Blink, Triumph, Adam at will. Candle is quite a late play. That's the only problem. Here's the thing, though. Like, Adam at will. I don't know. Is Adam at will any good? And probably with these guys, it's pretty sweet. Call the Cavalry. Seems like it's not that good. Yeah, we don't have a, we don't have ways to, to deal with those green creatures though. So I'm thinking that's why I'm thinking this does double duty, right? Oh yeah, you're right. The call, right? I forgot about the call. I forgot about the call. Maybe we lose a runner. Lose a runner for syncopate. 
or a divination, perhaps. Oh, I think we're good, actually. We're at 40. All right, well... Oh, yeah, that's because I, I moved the runner out. Yeah, I'm going to... Yeah, we... Triumph of Gerard might not be that great. Keep the runners and lose a div. Yeah. All right. That's more aggressive. That's more aggressive. You guys are telling me to go more aggressive. I will go more aggressive. I like these legendary creatures I'm seeing. This is a keep. Tatsuko into Danatha into Quende. Like, yas. Don't mind if I do. Draw syncope it would be huge there. Although, not considering we have this. Triumph was what he mean games, you're right. Yeah, it did a good job. This is definitely the deck for it. Like, the assertive. The assertive blue-white deck, that's definitely the ones. You guys are doing a good job. I, and I'm, you know, g yeah, give you a little bit of credit here. I'm listening. I'm not just doing what I, I'm doing this, like, taking it into consideration. I'm trying to switch into aggro brain mode. Oof, Baloth Gorger. Turn three Baloth Gorger. Not bad. There's that divination. It's hard work, but we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> and like half of the arguing Sean and I do on this stream is because he is like usually him trying to get me to be more aggressive and stuff. So. All right. I think this is a pretty easy Quende and do a double attack here. Just gain that Baloth Gorger uh, life right back. Not bad. Hold up the blink here next turn. Sean, yeah, Sean doesn't draft aggro, but he <laughs> plays aggro. <laughs> that sounds about right. Ooh, down goes to Quinde. That hurts. That hurts. Wow, he's leaving the Gorger back, hey? I think at this point, why wouldn't you just get in with it? So here, do I just divination here? If he's not attacking with that gorger, like that's that's fine, right? We still hold up. You still get to hold up, blink, just not the kicked version. So I think that's the move. Yeah, we're not gonna blink anything. Great. Great, a bunch of islands. Amazing. Yeah, man. I'll play this game. Where you attack with your Sarah Disciple and I attack with my Tetsuko. Courser, pretty good. So Courser or Snapper into Courser here probably, right? 
Holds back more stuff. Yeah. Yeah, no, Snapper's great. I know. How is Danitha the whole... Like, what, he really should just be attacking with a Gorger. Like, I guess th then Danitha just gets in. Although now she doesn't because of the knight. So he's going to attack with this thing. Well, he can't now. He's got the Snapper out, but... Snapper into Courser, then our Courser just starts going wild uh, with our Snapper, our big turtle. Big turt. So he wants to put that on his Sarah Disciple, which I, I'm not going to let him do. We'll take the extra one damage here. Okay. Runner, Courser, Blink, Runner, Runner, Courser, Blink. Yeah, okay. Runner is just straight, like, unblockable because of Tetsuko, too. Not bad. So is the Courser. Blink just also straight removes one of the knights. Like, what a joke. Looking good here. Looking good now. If he, if he, before he was attacking with Gorger, we would be able to get back in with Danitha. But, yeah, which I guess would have mitigated that. Oh, my God. He's going to put on Sarah's wings on that. <laughs> Get wrecked, pal. Get wrecked. Yes, 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 AJ, by the way, thanks for the follow, AJ BTW. I'm going to keep Danitha back now to block the knights and this thing. Black, black, attack, 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 yeah. Because then he can't afford to keep attacking with this stuff, so. Yeah, you're dead. Boom, you're dead, man. Yeah, I, I know it has vigilance. I'm just I just don't want to like then I don't give this flying. This doesn't get through. I'd rather get the four damage through to make it so that he's just pure dead now. I mean I don't like yeah, but if I do this, he blocks with both knights and then it kills her. Yeah. Two oh two oh. Okay. The real test lies lies before us now. The true test of Can we do it? Can we do it? Can we play smart? I will say this to all of to chat's credit here. The Boofigs, the Guitar Spiders, the Stukenborgs, the what else? Who else is here? The red, red AOL. Ken, my boy. 
you guys have been helping me stay aggressive in this in this deck in these matches so definitely um you guys deserve much of the uh sideboarding decision credit certainly because i probably would have sided out of this unnecessarily a couple of times already all right this is a decent start here a little relic runner into danitha a little divination back up this is great this is a great keep I do see the part of the Relic Runners. Ooh, against red? Against red, though, Relic Runners might not be that good. Hopefully they're not running that thing that... Wow, red-white deck in the finals, hey? Oh, Benalia. Oh, she's a knight. Oh, Danitha's a knight, you guys. Danith is a knight. Oh my god. Oh my god, Relic Runner. Oof. Ugh, what do I do? Okay. Play Benalia first. And then it gives us a knight. And then... Or do I play Relic Runner now? Oh, the, the choices. Do I play Relic Runner now, then then Benalia, then Danitha? That's all pretty off-curve, though. I think we just jam the Benalia and don't worry about the Relic Runner, right? Like... Benalia first. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Well, we'll... Yeah. Well, we both are showcasing our uh, bomb rares. I mean, I don't know if Four Bear Blades a bomb exactly, but it's pretty good. Chronicler. Yeah, just just showcases the strength of those one threes. Like it's gonna hold off that night nicely. And here we go, Danitha. And there's no real point in attacking with the night. We it's not gonna get through. So we're not even threatening anything at this point. And then next turn, I guess we Relic Runner. Or we Raph. Oh my god. He's not a knight, right? Oh my god. No, okay, never mind. He wouldn't even have Flash anyways. Or he wouldn't have Haste. Okay, our knights get wild here. Um, I think I'm going to play Relic Runner and then flash in Raph next, or play Raph next turn, or... No, play Raph now. Play Raph now. Get get in with the Relic Runner. Guys, right? Aggro, right? Right? Opponent missed a land drop. Like, we're just punishing him big time here. Yeah, that was a crazy draw. Those were just in that that was just like how can can this deck get any better than that? Right? <laughs> the Danitha was my favorite legend in the Dom set, but was deflated to see the preview for BBD's fumble. I broke apart most of my Voltron decks because of it. Oh. Well, fumble's one card. I mean, there's lots of stuff that hoses Voltron. It's it fumble still nothing if you they have hexproof right um yeah that's definitely the best curve this guy's probably pretty aggro <clears throat> himself but um i don't i actually don't think we do much i think this is i think this is right where we want to be actually 
like a, like we're on the draw. So syncopate's no good. Um, yeah, no, I think this is just fine. That is definitely the best curve we could have. We like, we like couldn't possibly have got anything better that like we had so much good stuff that it even like was it, like it made things look bad so this is kind of shitty but I kind of think it's a keep actually not a great start but I mean we draw some gas here we're laughing right yeah all right there we go relic runners great You kept Narset together, yeah, for sure, and took apart Karlov and Kemba. Oh, really? Just because of just because of the printing of Fumble, you took apart cards or you took apart decks? I'm kind of surprised by that. Just run. Can't you just run like something that I don't know? Get like um, just add a Mother of Runes to your deck. She's not that expensive. This card is pretty bad, right? I mean, Frenzied Rage on it's all right, but it's not great when you can blink it. It's also confusing to talk about blinking things when you actually mean bouncing because the card is called blink. Oh my god, what a frigging joke. Are we curving out again? We, you better believe we are. <laughs> it's so funny. This is like the same draw we had last game. Oh, he's going to Wizards Lightning that one. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Here comes Danny. Hello. Still on, yeah. But uh, in our last match here in the finals. So I was in my Uber. Yeah. And my driver was like, "Oh, where's your name from?" And I tell my name. He's like, "Oh, that's a name in the Bible. She was great." And then he tells me my story. Apparently, she was married to some guy. Sarah. She, Sarah in the Bible, but she couldn't have kids. So, naturally, she helped her husband pick out a new wife Ooh. who could have kids. And then God was like, that's great. For, thanks for doing that. And then when she was old, he let her have kids of her own. Oh. She had a bunch of kids when she was old. Well, that's quite nice. It's a horrible story. We're getting some pretty sweet draws here in this match. Oh, man. This guy's going to be so disappointed when I blink his thing. Oh, my God. We even got to draw the card there. Wow. And he's stuck on lands again? Oof. Maybe he's only running 16. Maybe he has a super aggressive red-white deck. It is kind of like we're playing the same match again. Except now we're backed up with blinks and sphinxes and all kinds of good stuff. So, I mean, he's just dead here on board. Because he could have another Wizard's Lightning or something. Gideon's Reproach, sure. Do I blink it? He goes to two. No, we're not, we're not going to blink it. We'll just let him. Because we'll just blink um, anything he puts away in front of it. Yeah, just play the Sphinx. That's it, guys. We did it. That's the first actual trophy on stream. That is it. We did it.
What is going on, guys? 